Right, so we're here just after the ARM press conference and uh, you launched the ARM Cortex-A73. That is correct. And, uh, and also a new GPU. Absolutely, so what we've announced today, uh, as we've done last year, is our premium IP suite for high-end smartphones. The first component of that is the Cortex-A73, which is our most efficient big core and the highest performing big core for mobile and consumer applications. And then, of course, the Mali G71 GPU, which, is, uh, which brings in a new uh, advanced scalar architecture called Bifrost, and is our first fully coherent GPU. And both of these products are designed for the next generation of applications that are fully immersive, augmented reality, virtual reality applications, or AAA gaming type of applications, which are much more interactive between CPU and GPU. And these two coherent components can interact a lot more together. And the focus for both of them has been to be delivering that performance with a great deal of energy efficiency because you need to be able to deliver that in the sustained thermal budgets and the power budgets that you expect for in the phones today. So the heterogeneous processing is like bringing that even much higher than just being a faster processor and a faster GPU. So that now we're getting even more combined performance. Yes, so if you look at it, um, it's the CPU is much more of a latency-centric set of workloads. The graphics are much more bandwidth-centric workloads. But as you have more interaction and more control on one side, more data on the other, you need them to interact much more closely. And instead of actually taking these transactions going off chip to memory with large workloads, you can actually do it much more efficiently by in sharing more between the two of them. So since 2009, you, there were some graphs and some demos over there. The smartphones are basically the same thickness nearly, but there's a lot more happening in there. And this is a challenge? I, I would go the other way and say the thickness actually is reducing. Right? So if you look at the 2010 phone, one of the key ones would be 12 millimeters thick. Going down to today, the Huawei Mate 8 being about 8 millimeters thick. So it's almost a 33% reduction. But in terms of performance, the performance has gone up you know, 16x to 20x on the CPU side, nearly 50x on the GPU side just in the last five to six years. If you go back to 2008, 2009, the GPU has gone up about 300 times, uh, the CPU has gone up about 100 times, but all while making the form factor thinner um, and the performance delivered in that context. So uh, we can look forward to A73 and the G71 next year on, in products or before? So we would expect that to be in silicon end of this year, early next, certainly in products by 2017. We expect the premium devices to be using 10 nanometer process technology, but that doesn't matter because the G71 and A73 are both process independent. They could, you could see them in uh, configurations that are in 16 nanometer or even earlier. And so the batteries are getting bigger and uh, the heat is not going up all these years, or is it going down also or no? So effectively, the batteries I'm thinking are getting thinner. Yes, there's a bit more capacity, but the form factors don't allow for the actual capacity of the battery to go that much. And as you get thinner, there's less chance for heat dissipation. So you have even less uh, ability to generate heat. So the processor, the GPU, all have to be that much more efficient to be able to fit in that constrained environment. And so are, are you? Uh, there's a lot of graphics on the wall there. Are you? Uh, entering new markets? Is it going to be laptops and desktops? Is this m more possible now? So we've always said that the, we have the technology and the performance levels to be able to attack uh, larger screen formats. You can see our GPUs, as uh, you might have seen, uh, are actually in 75% of DTV. So large screens are not an issue. Uh, tablets, again, which are large screen devices, have a lot of our technology. So it's really up to the innovation capabilities of our partners and their customers on how they see it in your markets. And how does it compare to a discrete or integrated GPUs in, in the in, uh, x86 laptops? So that is actually a, a very important question. What we showed today was the Mali G71 in a 16 shader configuration uh, delivering similar performance to a discrete GPU in a 2015 mid-range laptop uh, and actually beating some of the integrated uh, uh, GPUs using uh, the Manhattan within the GFX bench. And that's actually a very uh, good representation of heavy workloads in the mobile environment, but also uh, pretty taxing. 
And with that, Mali G71 kept its own. Uh, more importantly, the Mali G71 is designed for smartphones in that configuration. And so you're talking about a full uh, workload of less than three watts for the entire SOC. So that's uh, at least uh, a fifth, if not more, uh, uh, lower power than what you'd see in a laptop type configuration. So when the phones are getting thinner, the battery is bigger, the PCBs are smaller, right? Does that mean you're doing more in the SOC now? Even more and more stuff? There's a constant integration. You've seen that happen. You have graphics integrated, now vision. You're seeing uh, image, pro image and signal processing, certainly. Uh, and in fact, modems are getting combined as well. So yes, that continues to be uh, a consistent uh, integration of more technology onto the SOC. Nice. So uh, A73, a big jump. 10 nanometer, it's going to be uh, amazing, no? What people are going to be we're able to do We're looking forward to it. I think we're looking forward to a lot of the use cases we'd see with the A73 and the G71 in 10 nanometer next year. Thanks.